Hi, I'm Corey Litzenberger from CGLTax.ca, and this is Brainstorming Plus Tax. On this episode of Brainstorming Plus Tax, I want to talk a bit about managing debt in an environment where interest rates are rising. For almost a decade, Canadians have been living and borrowing in an ultra-low interest rate environment. As of July 2018, the Bank of Canada rate, from which commercial bank lending rates are derived, stood at 1.5%. The last time that the bank rate was over 1.5% was in December of 2008, when it was 1 and 3 quarters. In September of 2008, the Bank of Canada rate was 3.25%, and by April 2009, it was down to just a half percentage point. That's a drop of 2.75% in just 7 months. Effectively, adult Canadians who are under the age of 30 have had no experience of managing their finances in high or even by historical standards ordinary interest rate environments. The prolonged period of low interest rates which followed the financial crisis of 2008 and 9 coincided not surprisingly with an explosion in the amount of debt owed by both individual Canadians and by families. In the fall of 2005, the ratio of debt to disposable income for an average Canadian family stood at 93%. In the third quarter of 2017, that ratio stood at just less than double that amount, at 171%. For several years, financial advisors and government and banking officials have been sounding warnings that the debt loads which Canadians were carrying were likely sustainable only at the extreme low interest rates then in effect. Their concern was that when inevitably those rates returned to historical normal levels, the burden of repaying or even servicing those debts would be unsustainable. Whether anyone listened to those warnings is becoming a moot question, as the era of reliably ultra-low interest rates is effectively coming to an end. As well, the Bank of Canada has made clear in its regular announcements on the subject that the longer-term interest rate trend is an upward one. When talking about debt and debt management, it's important to remember that not all debt is created equal. Specifically, it's necessary to draw a distinction between secured and unsecured debt. Put simply, secured debt is which is secured by the value of an underlying asset, and if the debtor fails to make payments on the debt, the lender is entitled to seize that asset and sell it to satisfy any outstanding debt amount owed, such as a car loan. The types of secured debt most familiar to Canadians is a mortgage or a car loan. Unsecured debt, on the other hand, is provided solely on the strength of the borrower's promise to repay. Credit cards are the most common example of unsecured debt owed by Canadians. While any type of debt can cause problems for borrowers, when interest rates go up, it's usually those who are carrying unsecured debt who are the first to feel the pinch. Not only is the rate of interest payable on unsecured debt always higher than levied on secured debt, the interest rate on unsecured debt is usually a variable rate, meaning that it will go up every time interest rates increase, and that the monthly minimum payment required will increase proportionately. And of course, debtors whose debt is secured by an underlying asset and who find that such debt is no longer manageable always have the out of selling that asset and using the proceeds to retire the outstanding balance of the loan, while those who owe unsecured debt have no such option. For anyone who is carrying outstanding unsecured debt, the obvious advice is to get the debt paid down as quickly as possible, especially when interest rates are rising. That is, however, easier said than done, especially when the interest component of the debt, and consequently the required monthly minimum payments, are steadily increasing. So, the question usually is, who do I pay first? Well, interest has the same effect on every dollar, so the key is not necessarily to look at paying off the smallest balance, but the key is usually paying down the highest interest rate. For example, if, after paying all the minimum required payments, you have $100 left to put down on a debt, you should put that extra $100 against the one with the highest interest rate. If this rate is 20%, that means that you would be saving $20 over the next year in interest because of the extra $100 being paid off. If a different debt with a rate of only 8% was paid first, you only save $8 and would still have to pay that $20 from the other debt, leaving you $12 further behind at the end of the year. Even where repayment of the debt over the short term isn't a realistic expectation, such individuals are not without options. The best strategy to be pursued by those carrying significant amounts of unsecured debt which can't be paid off over the short term would be to try to lower the interest rate on such debt. There's a couple of ways in which that can be done. If the debtor owns an asset, usually a house, 
against which he or she can borrow, turning the debt from unsecured to secured, the interest rate payable on such borrowing will certainly be lower than the rate currently being paid. Where there is no such asset, the debtor can seek a consolidation loan from a financial institution in which all of the outstanding debts from every source are combined into a single loan at a lower rate of interest and a fixed repayment schedule. Much unsecured debt owed by Canadians is in the form of credit card debt, which carries some of the highest interest rates around. If neither of those options are available, then the next step would be to try to obtain a lower credit card interest rate. If the debt is in good standing, that is, payments have been made on time and in at least the minimum amount, the credit card company may be willing to reduce the interest rate imposed, especially if it is clear that the borrower will not be able to continue to make payments at higher rates. If the credit card company is unwilling to do so, the debtor may be able to seek out better rates elsewhere. Credit card companies regularly seek to bring in new business by offering the opportunity to transfer in balances from other cards and to have those balances benefit from a very low or even 0% rate of interest for a period of time, usually about 6 months. Where a new card with a much lower interest rate can be obtained, regular payments made will reduce the outstanding balance more quickly, since less of that payment is going to meet interest charges. Now, each of these options assumes a willingness and an ability on the part of the individual to make debt repayment a priority, working on his or her own. For some, that's not easy or even possible. As well, some individuals are already in financial difficulty and unable to make the minimum monthly payment required, or having missed some payments, they are now being pursued by collection agencies. In both those situations, obtaining help to deal with the debt repayment process is likely needed. That help is available through debt and credit counseling provided by a number of nonprofit agencies. Those agencies work with individuals, and with their creditors to create both a realistic budget and manageable debt repayment schedule. More information on the credit counseling process and a listing of such non-profit agencies can be found at creditcounselingcanada.ca. And with that, for CGL Strategic Business and Tax Advisors, I'm Corey Litzenberger. Thanks for listening. <music>